Hello everybody and welcome to a Python programming tutorial for the NLTK or Natural Language Toolkit module. The Natural Language Toolkit module is for Natural Language Processing or NLP. So what is that? So Natural Language Processing is the process of getting a computer to understand natural language. Now usually this is in the form of written language and sometimes it can be in the form of spoken language but usually spoken language gets converted to written language then to numbers but sometimes it doesn't it just gets straight converted to numbers as well. So it is the process of converting some form of language to something that the computer can understand which is numbers. So what can we do with that? So NLTK is actually the first module that I ever worked with and is actually the reason why I chose the Python programming language because really no other programming language has any sort of API or module or whatever you want to call it for natural language processing. So this here is my example, this is my personal um, company or business that uses sentiment analysis which is a form of natural language processing. So I'll just show real quick, just 30 seconds, some of the things that we do here just as an example of what you can do. But obviously sentiment analysis is such a tiny portion of what all you can do with a computer that can understand text. So for example, we do sentiment analysis for finance stuff. So uh, this would be for stocks. So we could choose Apple, for example. Uh, and this is the sentiment analysis for Apple. And we can actually see the sentiment has been going up pretty, pretty strong. And today's actually a pretty good day for Apple as well. Uh, so there's that. Then we have like politics. So we measure sentiment on political issues. Uh, we've got about 50 different political issues. Uh, war is the most popular by far. Uh, the NSA, economy, oil, immigration, you just keep going down. Uh, we also have sentiment on politicians themselves. Um, and it's not just the indicator. Obviously we have graphs too. So there's sentiment for Barack Obama, for example. Um, anyway, so we do stuff like that, and then also we have geographical sentiment. Uh, this is probably my favorite one that I have so far, but based on what people are saying and where they are from, I plot it up on a globe. Uh, we go basically by city, so this gets as granular as per city. And so we can do this, we can get you know the last 30 days of sentiment globally, but also we can find out what are the popular topics that people are talking about. Uh, so for the United States, or North America rather, you've got love, YouTube. YouTube's probably just because people are linking to YouTube videos. Uh, Durr. <laughs> That's literally... Durr! That's that. Okay, so people are really talking about that right now for some reason. I believe that's the most popular thing in the last one week uh, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you've got Supreme Felix. But anyways, you can find out what people are talking about and their opinion on it in, via the location. So I think that's pretty cool. And we can do that for other locations as well. So that's just a quick example of something that you can do and how powerful natural language processing can become and how you can translate um, just natural language to all sorts of things uh, that are pretty cool and useful. So. Moving on, we've got NLTK.org is basically where you're going to go to acquire NLTK or any information on NLTK, although you don't actually have to get it from here, and this is probably the more difficult path that you would take to even get it. So the shorter path to getting it, uh, let me just close the existing one, and let's open up the command prompt. Uh, so to get that, what you would do is, if you've just installed Python, obviously you're going to need Python to do this. So if you don't have Python, like this might actually be a lot of people's first uh, foray into the Python programming language, as it was mine, uh, because of NLTK. Uh, so if it is your first, uh, you will need Python, and we don't have Python up. So let me pull up uh, Python real quick, python.org. And what you want to do if you don't have Python, go to Downloads, and then I'm pretty sure this just senses my operating system, so you would just choose uh, Python 3.4 or whatever the latest version of Python is. It should be cross-compatible. Uh, the only thing it won't be is with 2, so please don't use 2. Um, otherwise, uh, download that. That'll be the 32-bit version of Python, uh, and that should be fine. So once you have that, you should be able to open up Bash, your command prompt, whatever, and just do a simple pip install NLTK. I would hit enter, but it's not going to work, and in fact, I'll just show you, it's just not going to work because this is for 2.7, and I have a 64-bit version of 2.7, so it's going to get angry. If you are somebody who has a 64-bit version of uh, Python, you'll want to go to that uh, website I usually link to. Let me go ahead and pull it up real quick. That is, well, it's taking a while. 
this website. And then you can do control F NLTK, click on that, and then here's your NLTK wheel. You'll just click on that, download it, and what that's going to do is allow you to install it with PIP. And if you don't know how to install things with PIP, luckily for you, there's a website for that. And that's this website. Whoa, it's mine. So <laughs> we can go to start learning here. Uh, it's in the basics, which is control F for PIP. And bang, here we have a PIP installation tutorial, which will also cover uh, how to install things with uh, NLT, or I'm sorry, with uh, the wheel files like from this website for example so you can grab this uh, if you don't know how to use pip otherwise once you have NLTK and you've got it um, installed or at least you think you do you're ready to move on to the next part so I'm gonna go ahead and just minimize this stuff because we don't need this right now so the next step that you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to make sure you can go import NLTK in your in idle or whatever IDE you use so this is just where you type your code. So I like to use idle. Everyone has their own favorite and everyone thinks everyone should use theirs. I like idle. You can use whatever you want, PyCharm or whatever. If you don't know what an IDE is, this is IDLE. And if you don't know how to get there, hit go up to your search or start bar, do IDLE. And then you'll just click on one of these. This is the one I'm going to be using. It'll pop up a window like this. Go file, new file. And this is your new Python file. Then when you're ready, you can save it. Save it wherever you want. Eventually, it'll probably matter where you have it, but we'll talk about that later. Um, and you'll just have to save it to run it, and that's about it. So I'm going to close this because I've already got one open. Whoops, I guess I hit yes. And once you have yours open, do import NLTK. And let's go ahead and make sure that works first. So press the F5 key to run it. It'll save it, we'll run it. It's taking a second, and boom. So the import of NLTK worked great. Now what we want to do is go ahead and do NLTK.download and then empty parameters. Run that, and you should get a pop-up window, not just this one, but another one. I'm waiting for it. Sometimes it doesn't pop up as it should. It's not here yet, but it'll show hopefully soon. Yeah, so it popped under. Here it is. So this is a window you'll get. Now, if you are operating headless, so say you're operating via a shell or something like that, you can still do this. You don't actually need a GUI or X or whatever. Um, you can still do NLTK.download, and then you'll go to like downloads, I think, and then it'll be like identifier, and just type in ALL for all, hit enter, and you'll download everything. If you have a GUI, yours looks like this, only everything's probably red. Make sure you go to all and just download all. This process can take anywhere from a few minutes to hours, depending on your internet connection. So uh, choose all, hit download, and pause the video for now and resume the video once you have everything downloaded. Okay, so once you have everything downloaded, what you're going to want to do is maybe see like a real basic and quick example of what NLTK can do for you. So NLTK and natural language processing obviously is an interest for a lot of people that you know want to have computers to read or understand text or speech or whatever. So what is the first step that you might do when you um, want to pull apart a body of text, let's say? Well, you're going to want to organize it somehow. So let's say you're looking at an article on, um, I don't know, the Wall Street Journal. And you don't know how to take your next step. Well, your next step's probably going to be either separating by paragraph or even separating by sentence. And then maybe storing. Generally, you're probably going to separate by sentence and then store a little identifier about which paragraph that sentence was a part of. Because if you if you think about it, when people write, if they write well, they have paragraphs that contain you know main ideas and sentences that kind of um, back up that main idea of that paragraph or the subject of that paragraph, whatever it happens to be. So you do want to keep that in mind. You don't want to just throw that out the window because that you know if if the author is, is a good author, they're actually doing you quite a bit of a favor. So it's not like you want to throw that out of the window. But organizing by paragraph, that's easy. <laughs> you know, you split by new line or something like that. No problem. Now how about organizing by sentence or something like that? That gets a little harder. 
So what I want to talk about is tokenizing before we move on to the next video. But before we get there, probably just knock out a few kind of terms for natural language processing. So you have, you'll have you hear terms like tokenizing. What does tokenizing mean? It's a form of grouping things. So generally you're going to have two forms of tokenizers. You're going to have word tokenizers and then you're going to have uh, sentence tokenizers. And what they do is a word tokenizer just separates by words. Sentence tokenizer separates by sentence. Easy. Uh, so just keep that in mind. That's what tokenizing is. You're also going to hear terms of lexicon and corporas. What the heck? So a corpora is just a body of text. So think about a corpora might be a body of medical journal journals. So example would be medical uh, journals. So this is kind of like a, it's a body of text where they're all kind of around the same thing. So you might have medical journals, you might have um, an example of um, maybe presidential speeches was another one, uh, stuff like that. And then you've got lexicon and also uh, a corpora would be anything in the English language. That's another example of a corpora. Then you've got lexicon, and lexicon, you can just think of a lexicon like a dictionary, okay? This is the words and their meanings. Now again, this varies, right? So for the English language, that would be like the English dictionary, but consider, uh, for example, the difference between uh, investor speak and regular English speak, okay? So the difference uh, we can see with someone who is a, uh, a bull versus someone who is a bear, right? So let's say investor speak bull, investor speak um, bull equals someone who is positive about the market, right? That's a bull, someone who's bullish on the market, as opposed to, you know, English speak, which is just the general English language, um, that bull is, you know, scary animal you don't want running at you, right? <laughs> That's a bull. So keep that in mind, the difference between corpora, just a body of text, lexicon is the words and their meaning, basically. And then as, when you convert to numbers, words and their, and their values. So those are some words. Let's talk about tokenizers for now, and then we'll conclude this video. So I just want to show you a real quick example of something real basic with NLTK, yet extremely powerful and uh, valuable as well. So let's get rid of this NLTK.download nonsense. And first we're going to say, uh, we're going to do from NLTK.tokenize. We want to import the sent tokenize and word tokenize. You might be able to guess what these do. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's just come down here. I'm going to leave these. Uh, just for the record, I always post all of my code online. So you'll be able to find the code here uh, by going to Python Program .net dashboard, data analysis, and NLTK. It'll be right here. This is the older version of NLTK. I did have a, a series on NLTK long ago. It was filmed with a potato. Uh, and it needed to be updated very badly. So here it is. Um, so you'll be able to find it here anyways, uh, whenever this is live. I also post all the source code on GitHub slash Python programming. So plenty of options for you. And obviously if you're falling behind or have questions, you can always post on the video. Anyway, moving along. Um, I'm gonna leave this here just for the sample code purposes. Uh, not everybody watches the videos. so. Uh, let's say we have an example text, and this is going to be a sentence. So our group of sentences will be something like, um, you know, hello there, how are you? So if I was to ask you, first of all, to separate this sentence by word, how might you do it? Well, most people are going to be like, okay, that's simple. Uh, we're going to just separate split by space, right? That's good enough. That would split every single one of these words. Uh, and then if we said, um, let's see, how are you doing today? Uh, the weather is great and Python is awesome. Okay. Uh, and then let's say, uh, let's do the sky is pinkish blue. You should not eat cardboard. Okay. So now, 
Uh, how would you separate? So you've, you've decided that you're going to separate words by a space. Okay, that's pretty good. Probably like 85% accurate. Now, what about splitting up sentences? Well, you'd say probably, okay, that's easy enough. We're going to use punctuation followed by a space followed by a capital letter. That's pretty good too. But what if we had something like this? Hello, Mr. Smith. Ooh, we've got punctuation, space, capital. That is not a new line. Uh, or a new sentence rather. So things like this are going to trip you up really fast. Now of course you could build a pretty good regular expression to split by sentence and split by words, uh, but it would be a pretty significant one to get as much as NLTK is going to get, because that's basically how NLTK does it. So we're going to utilize NLTK to split this by sentence and by word, and at least show you how powerful NLTK is and save you like hours of writing your own regular expressions. <laughs> okay, so first let's do uh, by sentence. So let's print uh, sent underscore tokenize, and we want to sent tokenize example text. So I'm just going to copy and paste example text right in there. So let's print that. Okay, and it creates a list. Okay, so this is just denote, denoting that this is a Python list. So the first element, hello, Mr. Smith, how are you doing today? So it, it did not fail uh, or fall for this, right? Um, and it captured everything. Awesome. So then what if we wanted to do um, uh, by word? Okay, so now we can do print uh, word underscore tokenize example text. We'll leave the other one there. It's fine to leave it there. And now you can see it split it by word. And again, it left Mr. Period as its own word entirely. Because as you'll see, it actually treats punctuation as its own word. You can do away with that if you want. By default, it recognizes punctuation as its own kind of meaning. So it's going to split that. Uh, but as you can see, it did not do it there as a successful uh, catch. Uh, otherwise, it splits everything as you might expect. Now, this is again a Python list, but of course, if you wanted to reference individual elements, you could do something pretty simple. Uh, so, if you want to comment out a block of text, it's really simple. Highlight everything, Alt 3, if you're in idle, anyways, and that will do it. Now, what we could do is we could say 4i in, and we'll do word tokenize. We'll just say it will highlight this, copy, paste for i, so for each element basically in word tokenize example text. Print i, save and run that, and now I've got a nice uh, output. You know, hello, Mr. Smith, how are you doing today, and so on. Okay, so um, those are just some real quick example of how we can begin to pull apart text and even sentences, and then obviously, like I said, paragraphs. It's not really so necessary. Uh, to tokenize by paragraph because it's really simple to tell what a paragraph is but telling sentences not so easy and telling words surprisingly enough not so easy now of course this is just the real basic stuff this is more of pre-processing of anything rather than any sort of analysis or anything like that but as we go on we'll see that NLTK can do really powerful things like part of speech tagging where it recognizes what part of speech things are and all that. It's, it's a lot more complex. These are things that you probably wouldn't be able to do even in a few hours with regular expressions. So that's what we're going to start talking about. The only other thing I will mention is that uh, tokenizers, we'll talk a little bit more um, in one of the next videos, maybe the next one, uh, about some of the various forms of tokenizers. So there's more than just this basic sent tokenizer. There are some more advanced ones where you can actually use unsupervised machine learning built into NLTK. You don't need to know how it works. You just use it uh, to make your own tokenizers entirely uh, based on your fancy word corpora. So uh, that's that. The only other thing I will say too is NLTK by default works with the English language for the most part, but it actually does work with other languages. So if you're uh, looking to do this with Spanish or whatever else, uh, look into it because it probably is included with NLTK. It's not probably not going to be as built up as the English language is, uh, but the other major languages are actually pretty well built up, so make sure to uh, check that out. And if not, uh, they can be because there are trainers, NLTK trainers for just about anything. You could make your own language, train NLTK to it, and it would work. So anyway, a little bit long for the first video. Most videos won't be this long, but I did want to give you guys uh, at least a quick taste of the power of NLTK and really you can utilize this power in about three or four lines and see how, how incredible it is already 
Um, so I think it's really cool. So there's a lot of cool stuff coming. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.